time? Huh? How old? 14. Sorry, I didn't okay. mention that. Ricky's son. Yep. Rick, okay. Um, so, uh, welcome back, everybody. I know some of you guys have been on Zoom for various things or other, but I've taken a long break, and uh, it's nice to be back. Um, but I've got to remember how to do all this stuff. <laughs> I, some of you tried to get on early. Um, Lorenz, I was going to let you know in the email, but I forgot that frequently people that I usually get on at quarter of um, and check and chat, and there's a lot of people on. This time there weren't people on because, because Dan had pulled the wrong switch or something. But I see we're here. I see some familiar faces, which is great. Um, so, unlike Mel, who just put out a plan for the New Zealand or Australia stuff for the next year, <laughs> I'm not good at planning ahead. Um, especially during the break, I figured, oh, I got time off. Well, <laughs> that time off disappeared after not too long. Got somebody lined up for next weekend and the weekend after, but it was nobody for this weekend. Um, and we didn't meet last weekend because it was a holiday weekend in the U.S., but one that my wife Gail and I particularly um, celebrate because the 15th is her birthday and we dare not interfere with that. Anyway, here we are and your presenter today is going to be me. Um, I looked through my stuff. Uh, what haven't I talked about? And do I have some thoughts on? And one was site calling. So I thought I, we would talk about site calling. And I say we would, I hope you're all going to participate when I ask you to. Um, and maybe even before I ask you to, as usual, if you got questions, speak right up. Um, if they're inappropriate, Dan will mute you. <laughs> no, it's, it's not that bad here. Um, but site calling is one of many methods of calling. I personally started with reading because I didn't know any better. Um, I was fortunate enough to know Jay King personally, and my next method was mental image. Um, and I still am pretty involved with mental image, but I moved on to site eventually. Um, and I'm mostly, well, I'm mostly not a caller these days, but when I was, I was doing mostly site calling with some of the mental image stuff thrown in when necessary. Um, so I know about site. Um, oh, what was I going to say about that? So one of the things in looking through my notes I came across something that I wrote in 1984, which at the time was current, but now it's pretty old. And it was written in Choreo Breakdown. And it was an article called The Comparison of Calling Methods, um, October 1984. And I would like to read you the first three paragraphs, because at that time I described the various different types of mental image, uh, of mental image that, that is in my mind, it's mental. Um, I described the various types of calling and, and I was going to read you what I thought about site calling at that time. And I've got to admit, it hasn't changed. Um, I wrote as many, um, ask any of the more successful callers whether they recommend site calling, mental image, or zeros and equivalents. I should have changed that to modules, it'd be more up to date. And they will probably tell you that they use a little of each. Although probably true, this answer is not much help to the caller looking for a little guidance. Let's look at some of the advantages, advantages and disadvantages of each system. There seems to be pressure, and this is getting into site calling, there seems to be pressure on callers these days to become site callers. If a caller is not already one, he is likely to apologize for that fact. I think that's still true, too. Um, why does site calling have this stature? Well, there are definite advantages to site calling. 
No other system allows you, the caller, to exercise as complete a freedom to totally allow your spur-of-the-moment creativity to come out. No other system allows you to add new calls to your repertoire with little additional effort. And that, at the time, was a lot more experimental calls coming in, and it allowed you to put them in. Now it's probably good if you're moving up a level and calling, you know, learning a, a new program to, to call. Um, no other system allows such complete variety with so little memorizing. And little memorizing is, is one of the things we're going to talk about. There are, however, some definite disadvantages. You must be able to um, accurately memorize who started with whom in each square, um, each tip. Not, e not in each square, in your key square. Each tip. You must be able to execute your resolve techniques on the fly without disrupting the flow or timing of, of your dance. You are at the mercy of the dancers in your key square. If they make a mistake, you may not be able to resolve their square or the rest of the floor. Um, so there, there they be, the advantages, the disadvantages. Flexibility, versatility, creativity, and the disadvantages, you're dependent on a key square or more squares. Um, so here's something that when people talk about um, site calling, I usually hear them talking about different methods of resolving. And I like to think of site calling as three separate and distinct parts, and we're going to address each of them. One, memorizing who started with whom. And that's a big one because, yeah, first of all, you have to do it, and people struggle with it. It was my nemesis. Two, dancing, the meat of the sandwich. And three, resolving, the thing that most people worry about. But the biggie is the meat of the sandwich, the, the dancing, to keep the dancers moving, entertained, keep smoothness, flow, body flow, timing, all that other stuff. So let's talk about, um, first of all, I'm just curious, it, as I say, I think a lot of people just think about resolving, but don't think about the three different parts. Am I wrong in that? Am I right? Any comments? Um, I can certainly see you're also, I've, go ahead. Yeah, certainly uh, I've noticed that if I, um, if I write down the square, I have a snowball's chance in hell of remembering who was with whom. If I don't write them down, I will never remember them. <laughs> but if I write them down, I don't. I rarely have to refer back to that note. I just have to make that conscious effort. And, to... and that's one of the techniques, but of of memorizing, of remembering who started with whom. But it's an important part. You got to do it. Um, and as I say, I don't think people help beginners that much with it. Mel, what have you got to add? Yeah. Uh, I, like I said, I started calling in the 80s when all of this was the big push on site calling. And what I found was the focus was almost entirely on resolution rather than actually calling. And I was absolutely aghast when I went, I was given a piece of advice from an experienced caller says, you don't need to know how to move the dancers around or how to, how to do all this. All you need to do is resolve a square they can get up and do anything. And it was, well, you know, and that that was unfortunately where the focus lie, as opposed to who started with who, pair up one couple, you're 50, you got a 50-50 chance. The meat of the sandwich, as, as you put it, is uh, the part that was sort of left by the wayside with too much focus on resolution during that time. Um, my apologies to you vegetarians out there, maybe not the meat of the sandwich, but the, the good stuff between the breads. Uh, <laughs> Brad, anyway. I'm gluten free. <laughs> <laughs> Tough, Chris. <laughs> um, anyway, the memorizing dancers, it, it, part one. Um, and it, again, I, I've said this many times, that's the hard part for me. Um, but how do you do it? You look at the dancers, and I think we all know at, at this level that you've got to memorize two adjacent couples 
that you don't have to memorize all eight dancers because of symmetry. Um, so memorizing two adjacent couples, that's four people, um, and it's remembering two partner pairs, and if they're with original partners and you know them, that helps. And then within that, one of two people that's the corner of the other couple. Um, so how do you picture people? Well, you look for similarities. Um, if you know them, the similarity is possibly their last name, <laughs> if you know them. Um, if they're wearing the same matching color outfits, that's a great way to match one couple or another. Um, if you notice sizes, you know, two tall people next to each other or two short people next to each other or, or a real contrast of a short and a tall. Uh, if you notice fat or thin people and all together or not, um, if they're both old, both young, or a big contrast there. Um, and as Dan said, a lot of people recommend, and I started this way, writing it down. Um, some people have actually, maybe commercially, produced pads that have the, the squares and you write the names and things. And burn your notes and don't let anybody else see them after your call. Your after your tip. Are are, are you reading my uh, <laughs> my notes, Chris? What was that? Oh, I was going to say uh, uh, just on the list of things you might look for. One that I always look for uh, is uh, I identify if there's a, if there's a visitor couple, you know, from outside the club, especially if they came from you know far away or something. Um, I always make sure uh, that I use them as one of my key couples in, in whatever square they're in. Because I, you know, try, you, you don't have all the people don't have to be in the same square, right? I mean, you can have the corner over here and I can have the. the you guys uh, are reading my outline. You're getting ahead of me. But oh, that's an interesting concept, Chris, is instead of picking a couple you really know well, you pick the one couple you don't know because yeah, that, well, makes, that, that makes that, them stand out. I love that. And it has the side benefit that you're focused on your on your guests uh who you want to uh you know you want everybody you want to have a to good time back. but it's especially nice if the guest has a good time so you can keep keep a little extra eye on them that way so write them down but as as dan said oh, i didn't think about burning them but i said don't ever let anybody look at your notes uh that way feel free to write the most unpleasant things about them if that's what catches your eye. Uh, so yeah, burn them after, that sounds good too. Um, and as Chris said, you actually don't have to memorize them in the same square. Um, it could be a head couple in this square and a side couple in that square and you can still make it happen. I recall doing that once when I was trying to find a square that I could memorize. And I saw one couple that was, I knew good dancers and dressed similarly, and I couldn't see with a couple on either side of them. I couldn't memorize them. So I looked at another square and there I found a side couple, same problem with the rest of the square. So I finally found a third square that had everybody that I could memorize. And that square screwed up pretty quickly because they weren't that strong dancers. So I ended up resolving with a head couple in this square and a side couple in that square. It can be done. Um, the uh, Oh, before I get to the last two points, many callers, eh, almost all site callers say, oh, you got to memorize more than one square. So your, your uh, key square, you're not just reliant on one square. I know people that have said they can memorize four squares. Boy, I have troubles with more than just one square. Um, but if you can, if that's one of the, your strengths, memorize more than one square. It's a good idea. It's not easy for me. A couple of different hints I've had that help me. One is sort of hit upon by what Chris said. If there's one couple I know that's really strong and 
for whatever reason, I know them or they're at least dressed the same colors or something easy to recognize. Um, I will use them as one of my cup, one of the two couples I memorize. And I will use them every tip and just have to memorize, no matter what square they're in, and just have to memorize one additional couple each time. So if they dance as a head, all I have to do is pick one of the sides and work at memorizing one couple. Or if they dance a side one tip, I just pick one of the heads and memorize them as a couple. Hi, Chris. The, the variation, uh, the variation on that, uh, going going back to the uh, scattered uh, couples around the floor, is uh, you can use those people that you know really really well as your backup people. Um, I got some people I memorized that are maybe more in front of me or whatever, maybe a little easier to see and whatever. But then you know Bob and Sally who are married you know, who I've known for 15 years, they're back there. And all I have to remember is, oh, they're, they're, there they are and they're ahead. Um, and now I have a, that's another couple, a backup couple in case I have trouble with, you know, the other, uh, you know, any of the other squares. So it, it, memorizing multiple uh, squares is not necessarily a whole, square, you know, a whole four people here, a whole four people there. You mean a whole four people here and, you know, some people here and maybe one or two other people over there including those people that I don't need to think about because they're easy. I mean, it's hardly memorizing. It was just like, okay, there are the sides. This yeah. Time. Um, so, you be, so one of the things that's the beauty of sight calling is you don't have to memorize materials, but the nemesis is you do have to remember people and it's different people every tip. Sometimes you can hang on to the same one. Um, one additional additional tip: If you call to to singles that change partners every tip, um, which I did for many many years with Tech Squares, my technique there was um, I'd play a gossip game in my mind. Oh, he's dancing with her this tip, and just playing that little gossip tip helped me pair them up for this particular tip. Um, you know, this must be the third tip. Those two are dancing together, but um, but that's just another mental game that I play to help memorize things. Um, and anybody else have any? Uh, that's that's about what I. Oh, the other thing I wanted to say is I used to write them down, and personally, I found. Hannah, I'll get to you in a second. I see your hand. Um, what I found is by writing them down, I never had to look at it. By writing them down, I did enough mental exercise to pick out people, and that was enough to burn it into my memory. So writing down was sort of a crutch. And after a while, I didn't have to get to that. But it took many years. Hannah, what were you going to add? Mel's hand was up before mine. Whose hand? Mel. Oh, Mel. I was I was just going to say the same thing as you just said, writing it down is one of those things that reinforces it in your mind. But what I found real helpful was the best advice I got as a new caller. When you're there to call, put your record away, go to the front door and meet everybody, even if you're doing a guest tip. Say hi to everybody, because people will reinforce in your mind who's with who. And when you see them on the floor together, that's going to come back to you. That's something you should do anyway and yeah. i and i never did um doing, I'm, it, doing it consciously to identify pairings though if you do that consciously it's not only good ethics but it helps you remember especially yeah. it helped me when i started writing because i'm absolutely horrid at faces and are or, sorry I'm good at faces horrid at names sorry about that richard i didn't mean to interrupt you there i mean don <laughs> good one bill um if <laughs> One of the things that, if any of you have danced to me in the past, you know that I'm not good at getting there half an hour before and setting up my material. I can set up stuff in five minutes, and sometimes that means the dance doesn't get started till five after the hour. I'm really not good at being early, but no way I can be at the door greeting people. It's just not my thing. Um, not recommended, but it's not my thing. Um, one second, Chris. And, uh, but along with that, watch the dancers while they're round dancing. 
you can see a lot of paired individual and do some memorizing during that, although you should be talking to the to the people sitting and, and greeting them. Chris, one last comment. Oh, uh, I, I was going to throw a few things in, but one was uh, on the uh, on the meet and greet uh, idea. Um, when they're coming in the door uh, is good, but you know, in between each tip too, you know, it's nice to go out and socialize. And, and when you do that, you, you know, you also have a little mental note of, you know, these guys are a couple and, and that sort of thing. And, oh, these guys are here. I didn't even see them come in. I, you know, it could have gone all night without noticing they were there and they're really easy to see. Um, the uh, one, uh, don't do, uh, uh, here's, a, here, here's a little thing to uh, uh, <laughs> avoid. Um, the, when, when you look down at the square, and you're, uh, I'll look, you know, everybody wants to do the number four couple and the number one couple, right? You're not, you know, you, you should be more flexible than that, but the reality is that's what everybody is always looking at. And so when you do that, make sure that you do notice who the other couples in the square are, or you'll do what I did one day, which was, I thought I was so clever because for the head couple, I wrote down a uh, birthday girl. And uh, I didn't notice that her twin was the other head couple. <laughs> you, you know who I'm talking about, Don. Oh, yeah. yeah, I saw them show one of them show up on Facebook the other day. Uh, yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> but but it still was true, Chris. The other one had her birthday that day, too. They were identical twins. Um, <laughs> anywho, moving on. So the meat of the sandwich before we get to resolving. Um, this is Anna. <laughs> this. Oh, Hannah, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> OK, no, I was thinking about the situation in Sweden where our dancers are shifting all the time, so they never dance with the one that they come to the dance with. But the, what helped me when I started to do the side calling, which I've been doing forever, is to resolve the square more often in the beginning so that I can re remember who's dancing with whom. I have a bad habit not to writing it down. Mm -hmm. I challenge myself to have a good memory, then I have to remember. But sometimes I don't. So this is this has worked for me to just resolve it more often in the beginning. Um, you'll find that over the course of the evening, especially if they don't mix partners, that you will get to know people better. And I'm talking not your own club, but when you're out visiting different clubs in the area um, or out of the area, if, if you do that kind of traveling. Um, and that's why I rely on mental image, the first tip usually, just until I get to know the people better because I've forgotten to, forgotten to remember, forgotten to memorize who started with whom. Um, uh, I thought there was another comment on that, but. Chris, we're about ready to move off of it, but go for it quickly. Well, just uh, uh, following up on what you said about uh, using mental image in the first tip, um, I have sometimes uh, just got up there, put the needle down, and started calling. Uh, and uh, about uh, three or three or four calls into it, I suddenly say to myself, "You know, I really should have looked before I started, and I just didn't look at all. <laughs> period. <laughs> I just like totally forgot to." even consider that I might need to resolve. And uh, so at that point, usually I've called something simple enough uh, that I can play it back in my head on mental image really quick uh, and then just proceed for mental, you know, what did I call? I always square through four, you know, some boring swing through boys run AC Ducey, something like that. And then I can like, oh, good. Okay. Now it's again, now it's, you know, wheel and deal box and that right left brand or whatever. But you can, you know, if you, if you have the mental image under your belt, um, if if you uh, are uh, if you screw yourself in that particular way of forgetting what you <laughs> forgetting to look at all, you can I'm, you can usually I'm, recover by just playing it back in your head real quick. <laughs> I'm trying really hard not to keep referring back to the advantages of mental image because I keep pushing it. I think people should understand it, even though I'm a sight caller and I think that's a great thing once you have control over it. But um, moving on to to the meat of the sandwich, whatever. Um, at that point, don't remember who started with whom. Just let that go away. Don't worry about resolving. 
don't worry if you lose track of who's got what. All you really have to worry about is smooth and interesting dancing. And by smooth, we, we've talked about that before. It means good flow, good timing. Controlling your difficulty. Now, this is one of the, the things that I found when I switched from mental image, I didn't want to say that, to sight, was that because I could freewheel as much, I didn't have as much control over the difficulty. I didn't realize that I was pushing the dancer's abilities more. So be aware that you um, can easily call stuff that's more difficult because you don't have to follow what's going on. You still have to follow, as far as fa um, phaser, you still have to follow formation and arrangement. But you just don't worry about sequence or, or relationship. We'll worry about that in part three, resolving. Um, one of the things that's good to memorize is flow modules. Little sequences of two, three, or four calls that flow well together. And you can throw them in when you're at the appropriate part. Um, one of the things you have to remember when some callers get carried away in their sight calling and they just have so much fun, they just go on forever and ever and ever. Um, I used to do a workshop, I can't remember, plus workshop or what, in one of the local clubs, alternating weeks with another caller. And the other caller used to like going on forever and ever. I got there one one week and they said, you know, last week so-and-so, we timed him. He went 55 minutes and then he did the singing call. So, <laughs> um, and some, he didn't remember who, who was dancing with whom. He yeah. was practicing for the Stuttgart Marathon. Yeah, <laughs> and, and of course there are those people that that do the meat of the sandwich in, 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 in two one or two sequences and then spend 55 minutes trying to resolve. But that's another, another part. Um, anyway, one of the things, I think we all enjoy choreography. That's one of the, one of the parts of being a caller and enjoy what you're doing. Enjoy seeing the kaleidoscope of people. Enjoy creating that good feeling for them because if you enjoy it, they'll enjoy it. Um, I've had dancers come up to me and afterwards and I say, boy, I, they say, boy, I can see you really had fun up there. Well, yeah, that's partly because I've learned to put on an act. My, my natural face is, I have to remember, a smile is with the ends up, you know, but uh, if you put the energy in and have fun moving people around, they'll have fun too, which is, is the main thing we want to do. Um, so before going on to resolving, I want to throw on Taminations here and let's do some, how are we doing time-wise? We're doing great. Um, I am sharing my screen. I believe I have Taminations on. And what we're going to do is dance a little bit. We are not paying attention to who started with whom, unless you want to remember that the blue people started with the blue people. Um, we're just going to move dancers. And I'm going to start a, a typical sequence here. Heads square through four. Oh, I wanted to put it on normal speed. Um, swing through, whoops. Swing through. Somebody give me a call. Boys run. Boys run. Somebody else give me a call. Bend the line. Bend the line. Twice? Once. We could, <laughs> we could do it twice, but the flow's pretty bad. Yeah. Another call. Pass the ocean. Oh. I'm going to throw in a split circulate just to um just to make up mix up the arrangement thing here somebody else give me a call square yeah. your set <laughs> <laughs> you want to go crazy don then centers walk and dodge sure let's do that um centers wag your tail here walk and dodge 
centers, walk and dodge. Somebody else give me a call. The, and dancers can do this. I think we're still okay with the difficulty. Well, this cast off here three quarters. To coordinate. Um, I heard it cast off three quarters. Anyone else? Sanders passed through. I'm going to do one. Sanders um, run and roll. My, my next instinct is to call Sanders box counter rotate a quarter, but I think we ought to stick to mainstream and plus. Sanders trade and roll. Sanders trade and roll. Okay, so my so we've done some interesting dances, dancing, gotten in, and one of the things I like to do is to get dancers into uncomfortable positions and get them out pretty quickly. Um, that way they think they're getting something bad, but you get them out really quickly, so they're not doing anything. So when we move on to resolving, um, there's several several things you have to do. One of them is before pushing the recall button and, and memorizing who started whom, it's generally good to, to uh, what's it called? Make your couples regular couples. Normalize. 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 I think that's a good word that I was looking for. <laughs> um, so what do we have here? We have one regular couple, one half sashayed couple. Um, somebody want to? Give me something other than centers half sachet or ends Zoom. half sachet. Zoom. Zoom. Double, uh, I was going to say double pass through and face in. That would do it. Um, centers box the net. Um, <laughs> there, now we have lots of regular couples. Now we can start thinking about resolving. Let's move on to resolving. Now, resolving. When I was first taught how to resolve, it was to make normal lines. Um, I'm just going to do that here. Centers past. Actually, before we do that, let's watch these guys dance. Let's just get a feel for what's going on. Do we see any quirks in in uh, movement? Any jarring circumstances? Uh -huh. It all looks pretty danceable. A little bit of, of APD or so. Um, out of curiosity's sake, let's look at his path. Eh, he went all over the place somewhat. And she is not showing me where she went. She traveled around the square pretty well. A lot of people the last few years have been, have been working on adding variety to make sure people go from one side of the square to another. We never did get into vertical lines here. Um, sometimes you can really see overflow. She got to travel around a bit, and so did he. Did we do a clover leaf in there? <laughs> it looks like he did. <laughs> There was one piece of bad flow. I don't know if you picked up on it while we were going. Um, nope. What was that? The center's trade and roll. Everything was good up to center's trade and roll, but Zoom is not an appropriate next call. Uh, yeah. Well, we're, oh, that's right. Some of them were facing the right way because it was a box circulate group, not just facing the same way. And it would have been overflow for those that it was flowing right and, and a real bad movement for the others. So, in in real life, the way that would have happened, though, is that the caller is thinking to himself, oh, I need to normalize these guys I'm resolving. OK, uh, Zoom or uh, uh, center straight and roll. And then he's to, 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 to do the normalization that we talked about. There's going to be an the, 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 it's going to be stop and go. After that trade and roll, I, I, I bet you dollars to donuts 
the caller is not just going to think trade and roll, and I guess I'll zoom. He's going to go trade and roll, and and then he's going to think, oh well, let's see. Now I need to fix it. Zoom. And in that in the time when he was thinking, oh, I need to fix it, I I bet they stopped. <laughs> Some callers <laughs> might have thought ahead of time about the zoom and and thought about whether it was a good idea, but I but but the bad flow there is actually going to be mitigated by the fact that we that after the trade and roll we stopped <laughs> which it, maybe that's not a great maybe that's not a but great let's uh, go, thing let's that we go, stopped, but it's but that's i bet what happened yeah, let's go back to there and and see if we can come up with some other approaches to that undo I, undo yeah, undo just, um leave uh, leave, uh what, tag what was the line it? tag the line is one i was thinking of what who said that? Regina. Oh. And to good. be fair to me, we talked for about a minute <clears throat> before I threw up that Zoom. So I was not even thinking about the last call we made. You just said normalize them. I said Zoom. <laughs> In my defense. <laughs> Clark, what was the call that I erased that you didn't want? You had centers I, run I, and roll. The mod, and to get out of here, I mean, tag the line's a good way, but one way to get out of this three and one line is centers run and roll, new centers trade and roll, but then the next call is usually double pass through, and yeah. then you'd worry about normalizing. Yeah. And the double um, pass through face in would do it. So let's do centers run and roll. Um, trade and roll. Is center centers trade, trade and roll. Centers trade and roll. And then anyone who calls that as, as their flow module, or their get out of an ugly situation module would instantly call double pass through. Yeah. And then I, they'd start worrying about normalizing. I was thinking peel off, but obviously face in is a good one too. Actually, when we when we had that set up, the first thing that came to my mind was double pass through track to follow somebody if you're not sure, which doesn't help you normalize, but that <laughs> but that's the first thing that occurred to me. <laughs> Let's look at Regina's tag the line, because that's always a nice one. As long as the center is don't have both have left shoulders we can do a tag the line if at least one of them has right shoulders um tag the line you want to face in out left or right <laughs> let's just tag the line for now after that i would have to do something else but... uh, let's face in and I'm going to touch a quarter. I'm trying to normalize now. Boys run. So we're normalized. All right. So now in resolving, there are lots of, let's talk about resolving for a moment. We should go through some more of these and then some resolves after. But there, again, I used to talk, was told, resolve, you know, get them in facing lines. I'm going to do that. Um, centers pass through star through and then decide if they're paired or not if they're paired or not um if they are are they in sequence and for me that was an awful lot to look at at one time and still keep them moving so that's one of the reasons i really never got into sight calling for a long time is it was just a moving target you know if i decided they were in such and such or this guy's partner was over here by the time i saw that and knew what to do with it i had to call another call and they were all gone already anyway so the particular method that i started using was to find somehow anyhow pair up one couple um let's say um color number four yellow so i was going to pair up these guys and and i'll do a, a pass through bend the line star through don don don't do that pass through bend the line that's terrible flow where was yeah, Don, you know how I feel about it. Pass through bend the line is awful for the centers. A cast of three quarters does the same thing and it doesn't feel so horrible. Let me That's only if you're stop dancing. If you if your timing is good, it will flow because your bend Let... the line is coming into a check step. But 
does I'm not. Gonna, no. Yeah, it does. Um, let's watch the the centers here and see what this looks like. It, it, you're you're actually who is that, Hannah? No, no it's Julie. Oh, Julie. Okay. Um, I wasn't looking at faces, just remembering voices. So let's thank undo. you. I take that as a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you should. <laughs> that, that's a compliment for you, Hannah. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, one of the problems with it, with the cast off three quarters, is the dancers aren't as likely to be able to do it from there. I think. But let's let's see what happens. Is pass through, cast off three quarters. The flow is definitely better. Thank you. Um, so continuing with the resolve, star through. By the way, I, I love that you guys are giving com comments here. Can I just point out? Yes. Um, for those three calls in a row, star through, bend the line, or pass through, bend the line, star through, or the cast off three quarters, um, at whatever appropriate challenge level it is, the call grand chain eight does that. And that's just a tool I have. When I see lines facing with the people I want to pair up on the ends, I just know Grand Chain 8 and boom, they're right where you have them. Great. Um, I used to know how to do that call, but that's yep. that was a long time ago. <laughs> um, and at, 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 at whatever level you're calling, you should you should have in your in your arsenal a whole bunch of of those kind of little uh, little factoids. Um, uh, because they come in handy for this. So at this point, this is my number four couple. I know how to dance these guys around in the middle with mental image, and I suspect most people do, and keeping these guys on the outside. I'll, I'll just throw in a swing through, boys run, Ferris wheel. Swing through, boys run. Ferris wheel. I'm basically keeping these guys on the outside. I want to get back into a, um, so I'm going to go centers square through three, back into a an eight chain through setup. And now I'm going to start looking for my number one man. Um, push the recall button again. Uh, change color one to red. And so I know I got to get him over facing her. her. So I'm going to do a, oh, what am I going to do? I'm going to do a. Well, a, I mean, I know two things at this point is a caller, which kind of helped me and hurt me. I know swing through, it's either swing through right and left grand or swing through. And if I did it right and left grand, they're out of sequence. Well, I'm, what I'm doing here, Clark, is yes, I agree. Um, eventually you will learn and we were going to get to that I, one of the methods of, of sight of resolving is called snapshot it, it once you get enough serious experience and i got this from bill peters once you get enough the word snapshot anyway once you get enough experience you can just look at this and say oh that's what that is i can get them out and, and swing through right and left grand. Well, through, well the, I now. can't tell. That's the problem as a caller, as a site caller. I can't tell right now whether swing through right and left grand works or leaves me out of sequence. But I do know that, quote, snapshotting, everyone's got their partner in an eight chain through position is easy to see as a caller. Okay. I'm going to. And stick, from there, you have two choices. I'm going to stick with something the. the yeah, you still want to get your one man off to your newer corner callers later. can have yep. no problem with it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a chicken plucker to bring this guy over here. So I'm gonna do right and left through. Whoops, right and left through. Pass to the center, and centers pass through. Centers pass through. Whoa, space. Centers pass through. So I see that I've got this guy facing. The next thing I got to do is decide whether this is his partner or this is his partner. And I, 
would like to do an Alaman left here, so this shouldn't be his partner. So I've got to bring him back into the middle and um, right and left. Bring him back into the middle and get him a different partner. So I'm going to do a right and left through um, and veer left. Ferris wheel and center sweep a quarter. Um, Ooh, tricky. Yeah, I knew that that was going to give him somebody the sweep. A no, quarter I like the sweep a quarter. Yeah, because of mental image, I I center sweep a quarter actually, but I knew that that was it. But there are different lots of ways you could just do a lady's chain in there to get him a different partner. And from here, I'll do a. I could do a left square through four. I'm going to do a slide through followed by a square through three. Centers. Slide through, square through three. I think the uh, trendy thing nowadays was instead of the slide through, square through three, was uh, heads back up, everybody clap, clap, clap. Yeah. <laughs> which I cannot tell you how tired I am of hearing, but anyway. <laughs> oh, it's not legal contamination. No. <laughs> so anyway, I kept, got these guys paired. I kept him out of the way for a long time. I moved these guys into the center. I saw he had the wrong person here. I switched to get the other person. Theoretically, I could call Alabama left. Um, Show ID, and sure enough, I have couples one, two, three, four. I can do an Alaman left and promenade home. So that was just one way of resolving that I use. Uh, let's go. I'm just curious now. Let's go Let back. Let me say one thing. Go for it. The I'm important done. thing is all along the way, you could make the decisions you needed to make while keeping them dancing. Exactly, yes. It, that's That was a big point that it was implied, thank you. I'm gonna undo a bunch of things here. Back to where we were normal, normal. And, 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 and in case the, the, the point wasn't made loudly enough, he could do that, keep move them where he wanted and keep them going because he knows what the calls do. In particular, if you're going to change, you know, if it's going to change the girls around or if it's going to keep you with your with your same person that that, that you know, the most fundamental thing that that that, you know, total beginners need to, you know, why do we do those stupid worksheets. Hide <laughs> <laughs> um, ID. So at this point, this is where we had normalized and we started to think about resolving. How would we do a snapshot resolution? What can we do here? Um, I see what my what my instinct to, to quickly resolve. Does anybody have a quick resolve from here? Oh, here here's a point. A lot of people say you can resolve from anywhere within three calls. I don't think I can, but maybe from with four calls from here. Um, What, uh, somebody want to give me a, a res, you know, again, these are the number one couple and the number four couple. Dan, give me a resolution from here. Resolve. My brain is tied up in knots trying to do this in three. I would end up actually stupidly pairing them, which is clearly not what you're thinking. I, I'm thinking my own thing. It doesn't matter. What would you okay. do? Um... Bah. I think I that? would uh, centers pass through star through pass through and then even though I disagree with Julie uh, cast off three quarters why not <laughs> <laughs> um, that's, what, that's sort of what I would have done right and then uh, right and left through star through swing through right and left grand which is a whole lot of calls um yeah we could we could shorten that from here as past the ocean um 
left swing through, and right and left grand. That works. So your trick was the left swing through versus the yeah yeah yeah. Let's. I was thinking fan the top uh, box and out same thing. Can, yeah. I have a uh, question for Dan. Dan, right here, you knew it was right and left through past the ocean swing through right and left grand. How right. did you know that? Uh, because one of my one of the patterns I look for yep. is a couple facing the couple to their right. Uh, say that in different words or, or explain um, it with the colors there. So the uh, the number four, the number four in, in on the inside part of a box facing the number one on the outside part of the box. A, a lead right, a, a set of lead right boxes. Oh, and you've kind of mentally start done a star through with these people or the fact that they aren't that the red people aren't a couple yet, you know, they're both red and on the inside. Yes, okay. exactly. Okay. So you're looking at this picture as if it's kind of a lead right box and wondering, is it a lead right box or is it a lead left box? Yes. Interesting. Okay. Or, or is it a, well, in, in this case, we, we know it'll be one of those, but I mean, in, more generally, after the star through, is it going to be of the lead right or the, uh, you know, uh, pair off uh, box one four variety? Mm -hmm. oh. um, it just while we're while you guys were discussing, I'm looking at this and thinking, gee, how would I now this is this is bad flow, but how about if we did a flutter wheel? Um, and promenade home. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, but I should stuff like it. You wanted flow pass through partner trade reverse flutter and keep her yeah. promenade. Yeah. Yep. yep. So again, that's a, a snapshotty kind of a thing. We just looked at it and we saw where people were. We had enough experience without just isolating one couple and then just moving the other. Um, now, how, now, how did we, how did we know that? How did we get those snapshots? I'll tell you what, it's not from doing it on a computer and having the computer do it for you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, let's see, where were we? I guess we were here. One of the, the, the methods that I, <laughs> I learned because I was at a caller school and the other, the other instructor was teaching it. And I said, oh, interesting, is let's just have the centers pass through, centers pass through. Um, so I'm just making two face lines here. And then you have either the ends or the centers circulate until a couple is paired off. Um, ends circulate still no paired couples and circulate this is good for the beginner okay and at this point we notice that the other couple is is paired also and we can you know do our ferris wheel center sweep a quarter or, or all sorts of things like that um a lot of people let's see bend the line Trade circulate promenade home. Yeah, <laughs> bend the line. What was I going to do from here? Oh, who are the heads again? I keep forgetting. Red. red. I think red. 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 Red rhymes with head. Okay. Um. From here, a lot of people from waves. A lot of people have been using AC Ducey. Which I can never spell correctly. I just do a scoot back and courtesy turn. Well, that uh, that that uh, ends, uh, I, which I guess was probably boys double circulate thing, uh, might not be is not the most dancey thing. No, but you can easily have that. Could have easily been AC Ducey the boys twice, and now now you just have the girls switch. So you can you know at that point you can have somebody run and bend the line and start through or whatever. But you can switch them back. But that'll that 
but that would keep everybody moving in a more in a more pleasing way. So the, the thing of, the thing about the end circulate is I think it's really very easy for a beginner to see. It's not moving everybody at once. Let's hold some still and move the others till I get it paired up. That's yeah. a that's a good strategy for a beginner. But if you were to if you were to do it a lot, then the dancers would even I think at that point go, oh, he's a beginner. <laughs> So from here, um, let's do, let's do a left square through three to a Dixie Grand. See, I wouldn't have known or seen that. <laughs> Dixie Grand is that a call? No one ever Not uses mainstream. Dixie. I know. I'm just I, nobody ever uses Dixie Grand, and it's it's so handy. It is if yeah. you cue it. You haven't talked to Ed Foot much, have you? <laughs> hey Chris. I, I, hey Chris. Yeah, I have to strong. I have to strongly disagree with you. Over here, we use Dixie Grand quite commonly at every single plus night. Oh, well, that's good. A, a, a lot of uh, a lot of callers have, for a long time, kind of ignored it. I um, with my metal image groups, when we've sort of finished metal image and doing lots of other stuff. And I've also done this at, at Color Lab, given a talk on how to use Metal Image uh, Dixie Grand from many, many, many different formations, not just a, a double pass through setup. Um, maybe we should do a, system, uh, a call on that. Anyway, um, let's see. I'm going to stop sharing for a minute. Uh, a lot of people use AC Ducey effectively. I don't very often, but I should. Um, just for variety. Again, it's not a mainstream kind of thing, but we are at the at the point of the hour. Um, I did not do much on discussion. I've been letting you guys take part, but I'm going to do a, a very quick review of what I said, and and then we can let you guys continue on. We can do some more exercises of, of hiding identities and moving people, and then doing some type of resolve from there if you want. But um, in summary, what are we talking about? Site calling um, is something that's done by most, I think, um, and a good goal to go for. But you have to be careful of the pitfalls, like making things too difficult or spending a day and a half trying to resolve and worrying about that. But it's basically three parts. Memorize who started with whom, and there are tricks to help you do that. Then dance. Keep it smooth, keep it interesting, keep it within the reach of the dancers. And finally, resolve. And hopefully you can do that pretty quickly so the dancers sing, oh, he's looking for the corner, because that happens, they can tell. Um, so three parts, memorize, dance, resolve. And with that, um, it's great to see this met these, this, <laughs> we had 25 people today before the holidays, we were down to around 15. Um, I know it wasn't because of the presenter or the topic. It's just because you guys were all antsy to get started again, as was I. It's good to be back. It's good to see all your most of your faces, some of you are hiding, but that's okay. Um, I want to thank you guys for coming. Usually I thank the presenter here, but poor presenter didn't have anybody to chosen. <laughs> thank you guys. Um, and as I say, we do have other presenters for next week and the week after, and I like to keep that a secret till a couple days before. We will definitely announce it on Thursday. Um, if you have any suggestions for people you want me to contact or have them contact me or topics you want discussed or rediscussed or disgusted with and don't talk about again, uh, let me know. The email address is donbeck at donbeck.org. Um, and let me see. Oh, we were talking about pairing. I did want to throw in about some of the different problems we have. We don't have any Japanese callers with us now, but we have I've done some mental image things with a lot of them. They have a lot of groups over there that are all women, so they have their own interesting approach to memorizing who started with whom. 
And we in the U.S. and I'm sure other places also have a large community of, of LGBT dancers where um, the left dancer and the right dancer aren't immediately distinguishable. Um, so there's a lot of interesting tricks you can add with that. Maybe the gossip one. Um, anyway, with that, Thank you guys for coming. If you have to leave because you've only designated an hour for this, you don't have to apologize to anybody. And if you want to hang around and chat some more, or um, I would suggest maybe putting up Taminations again and calling some sequences with all identities missed and then doing some site resolving, we can do that again. But So... The after party has started. <laughs> any any thoughts on what we've done, especially new people we haven't talked of, haven't heard from? Well, that part didn't work very well. <laughs> I, I can say a few, few words. Um, Go for it, Helen. Yeah, um, I teach beginners, and after one term, I still only have about twenty-five calls at my disposal. We take a year to learn basic in Sweden. So none of this would work for me because you say swing through and I can't do it. Uh, you, I mean, there are lots of calls I can't use. So it's very, very challenging to sort of uh, let go and just spread them all around because I, I don't have all that many ways of getting them back, which is, is a real challenge. Uh, I've tried to learn some of the things you said where I know that if I hide them at the end, if I do this, I'll get them together and that kind of thing. But it is really, really very challenging in the beginning when you don't have that many calls. And I, um, I don't see lots of places where this is addressed. How, how do you keep track of who's going where? Uh, well, I try. I, um, I'm afraid, Don, I don't use mental image. I should <laughs> after all the lessons with you. But uh, it's beginning to, to loosen now. I, I realize that there's a sort of a pattern. I try to let four dancers dance together, and then I send a couple over, and I try to remember which couple I sent over, and then I let them dance a while. Hopefully, I get them back again. And then I have four people I know how they should look before I say Alaman left, which is usually the way I get them resolved. I, I'm not clever enough to sort of do other fancy things. It's usually Alaman left, right and left grand swinger partner promenade, which is something they enjoy doing when they're beginners. Uh, just quickly on, on using the, the method that I said, you should be able to pair up one set of Assuming you can memorize, and it sounds like you've been able to do that, who started with whom. Um, with the limited calls you have, you should be able to pair one couple. Yeah. With your ability with mental image, you should be able to put them on the outside and dance the others in the middle. Yeah. Well, it's star, and, through, it's star through and ladies chain, which are the thing you have to use to sort of uh, change partners and, and that kind of thing. I don't know if I have much else I can use to sort of change partners with each other. Now, I, I use Square View. It has a function where you can, on Square View, you can print in the names of the people. And I feel that they don't know that's what I'm doing when I'm writing something on Square View. But if they see me with a pad and paper writing it down, they sort of, they can realize what I'm doing. But uh, I do it on Square View. And uh, then, of course, I just delete it when I'm finished. So there's no, uh, no <laughs> chance that anyone will read something that they shouldn't be reading. But uh, it, it's quite a challenge. I think to dare to let them go first you do a cup maybe a day or two with this lots of circles and stars and and they're always in sequence and you know that you can say alma left but then you know when you teach them star through and start getting into other formations that's a great challenge i think i think it's very difficult it, it sounds like at least you know their names so you can type them in if you know the people i, I was yeah, yeah. i know that and i never oh. have to worry about having more than one square i'm afraid Chris, hang on a second. I want to see if we can get somebody to talk that hasn't yet. Um, I have a comment to make. Um, this is CC. Um, oh. When I was first, so I haven't been calling very long. I'm a newbie. Um, I started in 18 and then with COVID, um, the, the person who was mentoring me, you know, everything was shut down. And he was having me um, do some site calling and he'd be up there on the mic with me and we had a, a, a square of just 
willing dancers to be guinea pigs. And he would tell me, you know, as far as the meat goes, this is this is just a tip for mentors who are training um, new callers. He, he put them somewhere and then he'd have me dance them into a different formation instead of a resolution. Okay, they're in lines. Okay, now put them in parallel waves, north and south instead of east and west. Dance them till they're there, but keep them moving. And he, he had me practice the site calling that way instead of just call and then resolve. And, and CC, would he do the resolving so that you well, definitely didn't have to memorize, worry about that part? Um, then he would dance them and then he'd say, okay, remember your key. He would dance them after I danced them to give me a mental break. And then he'd say, okay, remember your key couple. Now let's resolve. So it, it was back and forth. That you're, I'm sorry, but I'm reminded of something that many years ago, somebody that I was talking with, he was in Texas and he was talking about, I, I do mental image for a while and then I have a mental breakdown uh, when he loses track of people. And I loved, loved his terminology. Your mental break reminded me of that. Sorry to, to digress. Um, so I, another question, Cece, was the stuff we went over here useful or yes. did it make yes. sense and, and what yes. have you? And, and in fact, on one of the, the things I was like, wait, you can just resolve it like that. I just didn't chime in. There was enough. Um, I'm like, I, I saw a different resolution than everybody else was saying out loud. So yes, it, it, it helps to because I haven't had the one-on-one -on -one mentoring um, mm -hmm. in two years, it, it helps to, to be a part of this and, and be able to see it in practice. Great. Um, just a, an, another pitch. We're doing another, my sixth group for a mental image class. I'm already signed Wednesday, up for it. And CC is definitely <laughs> one of the people signed up for it. So I'm looking forward to us working through with that. And I see hmm, several people here that have already been through that that even though you're not using it, Helen, I'm sure has helped in the background of understanding what's going on. I think um, actually it does. I think it helps you sort of um, remember a little bit where people are and, and that kind of thing. It definitely helps. Um, and we still have openings if people want to go. Chris, your hand is getting tired. Let's go for it. <laughs> um, well, uh, I, I was thinking about a, a couple of, of different comments, but the but but, I'll, but the you know at the end they all kind of boil down to this one, whether it's for the purpose of, of being able to, to have some meat in the calling and being able to figure out what you're going to do there, or the the resolve techniques, um, you 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 really have to have a lot of facility with what the you know we always say what the calls do, but but the way to get that I think is to take either physical checkers not the computer. E either regular checkers or if you're a complete klutz like me and you can't do the checkers with your hands, I, I get out of, you know, a piece of paper and I draw the picture, you know, with little, with little nose diagrams uh, for each, each part of the move and to, and to work through the calls that you're going to be using. And, and when you're starting out, right. And you're thinking, well, how, you know, what, what are kind of things I can do to, with this very limited choreography, what do they know? Well, they know circle left and right. Okay, well, you can have them circle up for a quarter. I mean, there's all, and you probably taught them ladies chain and things like that. And, and you know, things that are gonna move them around like a chicken plucker or they're your pass through bend the line type guys, just to be able to have a real good intuitive feel of, of how those things work and, and where people go. Every single person, don't do it on the computer because even if you're sitting there looking at it, the computer's gonna move a bunch of people for you. And it's, you're, you're not gonna get the same thing in your head about, you know, I put this one here and then he goes over here and that's how they get there. And now let me do it, you know, a, a bunch more times for all the other guys. Um, I, I really think that's like the most important thing. If you're going to site call, the way to learn to site call is to write. And you don't necessarily have to ever read that particular material, but just sitting there and writing just tons and tons and tons of material, playing around with the calls that you know. Um, and that, that just will really to help you just tremendously. The other quick comment that I had was in terms of a lot of people like to give you a system for, you know, you get this one together and you chicken pluck them over to here, you get lines and you see this and that and all these little formulas. 
And I could, I always had a hard time um, <clears throat> trying to, when, when I first started out, I went to somebody, I'm like, how do you site resolve? And the person rattled off a, a whole algorithm right off the top of their head about do this, that, and then they're facing or not, and, da, 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 da. and I'm like, I'll never remember that. And I'll certainly never figure it out in real time. Um, and so that, that, that didn't help me at all. But, but a thing you can do is when you get to the point where you're thinking you want to resolve, you can never forget that they might already be resolved <laughs> or very, very close to it. And so before you go, you know, through the whole procedure and all the mechanics of moving them all around, be aware of maybe, maybe they're already there. You, you, let's like we had that beginning double pass through formation, right? And maybe the people on the outside are already paired. Well, that part's already done for you. Now all we got to do is that, you know, we skip all this moving them around and getting them over here and there. We're, there we've already been, you, you already did that effectively. Now you just look and you see, oh, well, they've either got their partner or not in the middle, <laughs> right? But that kind you, of thing happens a lot. But you have to be fast enough to recognize that. Ah, and, but and, if you know some calls. And that calls, takes experience. And that takes experience. Yes, but, but if you it, know some come. calls. But if you know some calls that you can use to eat, what, what calls you can do, a two couple dancing thing in the middle, right? What, what calls can you use to, to give them something to do while you're taking another breath, right? Uh, you know, we got, we got lines and star through, and now we have a beginning double pass through. And I'm wondering, I'm wondering to myself, is that the right one? I'm trying to remember. We'll do a right and left through, right? Centers do a right and left through. And if, and, and, if you didn't like what, and that gives you time to look at them and they're not really going anywhere. And then maybe you like them where they ended up after the right and left through. And if you didn't, well, do another right and left through, or, you know, maybe it's even time for square through three Alaman left, but uh, don't, you know, know, know what are the little tricks you can do that, that don't do anything. And also the little tricks that, you know, do the one thing that you want, which is to switch somebody. Zero modules can be your friend. All of the, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Lorenz, I was going to ask you what method you resolved, but you waved your hand beforehand. So let's hear what, what you really wanted to talk well, about. Well, Don, first, first of all, great session. Enjoy, listen to it, and nice to meet all the people. Um, for me, how to learn site call is, uh, I think the way I did it is reduce complexity first. So don't start with uh, four couple full sites and go all fancy in arrangements and things like that. So I would suggest to follow the chicken pucker path first. So you know if you are near a zero box or you're near the across the street box, just to get a feeling of where your dancers are. And that sticks then in your head. And then when you start with uh, getting away from the chicken pucker, try isolated site. Let's say head square through four. And then you go crazy here with touch a quarter, scoot back, split circulates. But you know you are near, what I call near, a zero box. And then normalize, but you know you're not far away from an element left because you're near this zero box. And then you can go to the other side, cross the street box, do the same, but then you're resolving well again with the chicken plucker pass back to the zero box for an element left, give the dancers to feeling to move over the place. And then there's something which is called rubber band, right? Where we have a, a, a group of people, but we're keeping them together with maybe we are left. I don't know if you can imagine that, but they are together and then couples circulate. They're still together. Yeah. You don't call center straight because then they are not together. Then the rubber is broken, but then you know where you are near. And, and once you master this, it needs, um, yeah, all this formation management and arrangement management. And then it's the last step to go for for four couple site, which is uh, challenging, as you mentioned, Don, memorizing. And then, and, and if, if you're in, new in a club and you are a little uh, shaky uh, yeah, and nervous, and, and once you call your first bigger dance and then 200 people are there and then you go, oh, I thought I could memorize them and then don't. So many aspects, but... Good discussion. Very nice. Thanks. I like one of the things you just said, Lorenz, is it brought to mind that two couple resolving site should be reasonably easy when you've got one matched couple and one non-matched couple. And you all you have to do is manipulate them to normalize them and then make one of them match together. Um, and 
by using basically the chicken plucker or something like that, you can get head square through and they're working in that box on the side and do a bunch of sight. Resolve them and bring the unmatched couple across to the other side with the chicken plucker. Do some more of that over there. Bring them back and call your own and luck. Um, that's I mean, you can you can also do heads lead right. Yeah. Yeah. And then you know you get out a swing through right on left grand or circle to a line and then you are in a zero line. Whatever you get out will be there. And then you can call chicken plucker method. But but knowing it's not from zero box to across the street box, it's maybe from a lead to the right box to a lead to the left box. But anyway, you, you're keeping and you know it, you are near what I call, you are near your known get out formation. I, yeah. I, I'm i thinking the lead right is a little more difficult because you've got two matched couples. And so you're not sure which one is the inside or the outside. And, and you'd have to memorize which one you put on the inside before you swing through, turn through, or, or swing through right and left grand. But when you've got one matched and one not, that's cool. Um, Mel? I, I want to comment on one thing that Lauren said as well. Uh, one of the biggest things that happened when I was learning to call was the advent of sight resolution being the be all end all. And I really appreciate it. Start small, work up. Start with your box one, four, or your corner box, and then you're across the street box. I have seen this so many times. Here's a resolution technique, be it friends or enemies, or single dancer pairing, or, or sorry, single couple pairing, or box or double pass through. And then they'll say, right, okay, here you go. It'll work. Heads touch a quarter, sides face, box the net, and roll, separate, okay, resolve. Uh, you know, whatever. And that poor new caller is going, how do I normalize with this? Because they haven't taken the time to just learn to dance the dancers, normalize couples. There was somebody had mentioned a great exercise and I don't know who your caller was, uh, but I applaud them rather than say, okay, resolve the square. You're, you're in a column. I want you to take me to parallel ocean waves. You're in a box. I want you to take me to a tidal wave. You know, those are great exercises and which and is at which the is beginning, what they're more ben yeah they're more beneficial I, was that cc that said that no uh, cc said that her mentor was doing that with her yeah excellent it's an excellent exercise it's I agree. something that i really really strongly recommend well what do you got to add well much to my amazement i have to agree with mel on something <laughs> um what we've seen in the for several years now in caller schools is people get beat to death with resolve, 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 resolve. And formation management goes right out the window. I'm really glad to hear Cece say she got some training in that, some experience in that. Um, we see it all the time with students in our schools where they're working so hard to resolve that they fly right by it a couple of times. And in the meantime, timing, body flow, formations go right out the window. So well done, Cece, keep it up. Clark? A uh, couple things. One is uh, you've been asked to put the metal image training info into the chat box in case you hadn't read that yet. So think about I, that. I haven't read the chat. Yeah. Um, so. I, what I would suggest better than doing that, if you send me a quick email to Don Beck at donbeck.org, I will send you times, cost, um, and a, an enclosure that does a very brief, high-level overview of what mental image is. Um, Don Beck at donbeck.org. And uh, I'll do that right after we get off here, if you... Uh, want the information on it. We will be starting Wednesday. Um, Chris, I have So, heard. no, I, that was just an aside that you hadn't read the chat. Yes. Um, the, I have a couple things. One is there is a Caller Lab document that documents a bunch of resolving, site resolving algorithms where it says, get in ocean waves, check for this, do this, check for that, et cetera. Um, and there's a lines facing one, there's an ocean wave one, et cetera. Um, 
and I helped do the ocean wave one. It wasn't my invention, but um, Dave Wilson teaches it in his collar schools and he likes it and thinks it's superior in several ways to the lines facing one. But what I think we've all learned when we've been in collar schools or run them is when you try to teach newer callers an algorithm, and even though the algorithm is well designed and you only have to make one little decision, each little point, and you can keep them moving and all the things are great, that's still overwhelming for newer callers. Um, and, and so whenever you're in a caller school and say, follow the algorithm, do this, do this, and then they'll suddenly do, you know, bend the line and the caller, the leader is like, that wasn't in the algorithm. And it's just like, no, it came out. I've, I had to call something and, and now I've got to start over. So, so if you're good at following those algorithms, caller lab has them, they're documented somewhere. I understand they may not work for you. When you have to resolve, it adds a lot of stress. The first thing is I'll stand up and try to memorize partners and corners. And my mind is either, oh, good, there's some people I recognize this is going to be easy, or oh, crap, I'm screwed. I'm not going to be able to do it. And once my mind goes to the, oh, crap, I can't do it, I'm really in trouble for that tip. Even if I write them down or whatever, like, and I don't have a solution to that. I just generally don't sight call as often. Um, I hate standing up looking and going, this is going to be hard. In, and I'm sorry, I don't have a good solution for that. Um, there's been times, even though I was hired to call weekends of dancing, and most of it was going to be written at the challenge level, um, I would get up with, with my better caller, in that case, John Sobalski, and we would occasionally start a session by just alternating calls. And it was so much relaxing to be on stage with a second caller where if I needed to, I could nudge him and go, you resolve. And he would just resolve because he was very good at resolving. And occasionally we would do things where we'd alternate calls and resolve and that was good. But if I couldn't remember the corners or got lost or I was getting too stressed, having someone to bump and go, you do it, it just shows you how stressful resolving is and how it removes, you know, 10% of your brain power to do it. By the same token, I was hired to call a week's worth of teaching a particular challenge level in Germany. And I didn't know any of the dancers and there's six squares of them. And I can only see two squares easily. And right off the bat, my focus is teaching and drilling and making sure they're good at the calls I'm teaching. And the last thing I wanted to be doing is resolving and wasting time resolving. And I almost got to the point of just going square your set, but they were unwilling to have me do that, which was good for me. So one of the callers who was a dancer at the time was very good at aiding me as a caller at pointing out what he knew I was looking for, be it a corner or whatever. And I really appreciate that. And again, it took the stress off having to resolve and waste time doing it. European Chris, dancers are very good at that. <laughs> Chris, before before I let you talk, I got a couple more anecdotes I want to throw in. One is many decades ago, um, Jim, when I was in one of Jim Mayo's classes, schools, um, he brought Deuce Williams into the, or Deuce was coming into the area, and he got a bunch of experienced callers together to listen to Deuce talk about site calling. Um, and he invited me, he says, you're not as experienced as the other guys, but you might enjoy this also. Deuce blew my mind with, you can do this and you can do that. And I don't think he talked about resolving or if he did, it was mostly about the meat that you can really ad lib. And, and I don't remember too much about it, but, um, but I do remember a few days later, he was calling at a local club, a fairly well-respected high-level club. And I'm dancing to him and I'm thinking, wow, this, he's calling amazing stuff um, that I, you know, haven't danced these combinations before. He's really doing this site calling thing where he can ad lib and free wheel wherever he wants. Um, and I was really impressed. And the second tip, there was some more of it. And by the third tip, I said, this stuff is familiar. I, I realized that 
Deuce had a, a different set of somewhat memorized flow modules and things that he used as the meat of the call. And to me, they were different than the than the stuff that I was used to dancing to, to other callers in the area. But he was still stuck in his own writ and in his own rut. So the first, as I say, two tips were pretty were amazing. And towards the end of the evening, it started to get repetitive. So you got to do more than just just have one set of slightly different things. You've got to be able, if you're going to practice this whole thing and, and free will a lot. Um, it was an interesting lesson for me. The other thing was, as I said, I did years of mental image calling, restricted in what I could do because mental image is not as freewheeling as, as sight. And I wanted to get into sight and I could really manipulate dancers to where I wanted them pretty easily. So I could res resolve sight. What I couldn't do is let go of the mental image. <laughs> um, I, I was, it just instinctively, I followed it no matter what. And I ended up as a technique at the time, I didn't know what spin chain through did mental image lead. So I would throw that in and all of a sudden, my, sudden my mental image was shot. And at that point I had to sight call to resolve. So that was my technique of sight calling. Learning to sight call was to intentionally get myself lost and out of the mental image thing. But because of the mental image, I was able to manipulate dancers pretty easily and move them around. Um, Chris, you've been dying to say some more. Go for it. Oh, well, when, when Clark was talking about having somebody on stage that you can nudge and say, oh, uh, resolve, I guess if you really wanted to be a bastard and you were that other guy, you could be like, I thought you wrote them down. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but but the, the, the comment that I was going to make was actually uh, about not sight calling. And, uh, you know, I, I sight call her, I used to. And the, um, you know, I guess I, I recommend it. And, the, you know, it's uh, it allows you to, to do whatever you want, uh, in a sense. The uh, it, Something it does not allow you to do is, and, and you'll hear Clark uh, kind of allude to this sometimes, uh, if you're calling uh, high-level challenge material, it's basically impossible to site call that because if the complexity, uh, you, you know, you, you can't do a, a lot of hardcore, super intricate choreographical things. If, if you can come up with them that fast in your head, then by definition, they, they weren't hard enough. <laughs> so, so there's some levels where it's almost all entirely red, even if the person can site call and they might site call some of it, but, but not most of it, but, uh, but, there's some callers um, uh, that I've met over the years who don't sight call. And it shocked me because they were really good callers. They had lots of creative stuff. It was fun to dance to them. And, and I was all impressed with them. And they were, you know, great callers, the wonderful, wonderful dances. And, uh, uh, and it, it was just, they were just great. And, and they can, and they can't sight call this. I, I just assumed Anybody who's that good, they must be. They must be a sight caller. Not necessarily true. Um, the other techniques, you know, of, of memorizing things and and doing different kinds of module based stuff, um, is not what I do. But I've got to tell you, there are some people who that's what they've been doing for decades, and the quality of their dances is just a plus one hundred percent. So sight calling is, uh, you know, a wonderful tool, and it's 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 a tool that I use, but uh, not everybody does, and you don't need to be a site caller to be an excellent caller. I just wanted to throw that point in there. Excellent point, Chris. Excellent point. Something I should have asked a while ago, but those of you that do site call regularly, how many squares do you remember memorize? As I say, I do one and know I should do more, but that's beyond me. Um, anybody want to volunteer a number? <laughs> If I am lucky enough to be calling to more than uh, one square, it's uh, I generally try to write down two. <laughs> um, Mel, was that a one square, or, or I have a point? I, I do there. I do one, but I also do what uh, I think it was Chris was saying earlier. I pick out a smattering of people that I see that are paired around the floor. If I see paired couples, I'll just pick out a smattering because if I do lose my pilot square, I know if I put two of them together. At least I'm fifty percent home. 
I have to uh, I have to write down the ones that are not just uh, smatters here and there. I write them down too, but uh, but the most I can the most I can write down is two because uh, I'll write them down and then when it comes time to resolve the amount of effort to look down there, you know, the going back and forth between what do I see, who's still up, what did I write down. I, you know, some people are like, oh, I do seven squares. And I'm like, okay, good for you. I can, after two, I'm sunk. That's, a, you know, I can write down two, I can keep track of that many. And, uh, or I can write down one and smattering of several squares here, you know, some people here, some people there, another one over here. But in terms of, you know, writing down four people, two is the most I can write down for, for that. So sometimes I'll write down two. And if there's lots of people, maybe I'll, maybe at that point, there'll be one other smattering couple that I'll just make a note of. Uh, and and I, on the piece of paper, I try to write down geographically on the floor kind of where they are in front of me. Um, and I use a little notepad, which of course, as soon as I'm done, I rip that up and crinkle, 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 and put it in my special little trash can so nobody can see, you know, bald and smelly is dancing with, you know, overly tall and geeky or whatever, you know, horrible thing I wrote down. Hannah, how many squares do you memorize? Well, I look at one square. I have to admit, I'm very bad at, at looking at uh, more than one, but usually we don't have more than maybe two squares uh, in classes. When I call bigger dances, I'm still with that one square. That's bad. Um, so we're all in that same, or most of us in that same boat. I do, I, I'm just going to throw in an anecdote of memory popped into my mind. I was calling at the New England, New England convention one year, probably the plus hall. Um, we had, I don't know, 30, 40, 70 squares out there. It was a huge crowd. I couldn't see the back of the hall, but there was one square right in front of me that, um, had two solid couples I knew and they were adjacent to each other. So I quickly memorized them. One of them was another caller who knew my shortcomings on being lost if I don't side call. Um, and I also caught off to the side of me, the, the, the stage jutted out into the group. So there was a square that formed up late to the left of me that happened to be members of Tech Squares. The first groups I think were Don's Pawns people tech squares and they a singles group and had random pairs and they only got seven people so they were dancing with the phantom um but i knew they were good and as i was calling and resolving one time the square i'd memorized out in front one of i knew two strong couples but i didn't realize how weak one of the others was and one of the people made a mistake and that square broke down and then they kept moving and and my friend down and that one was like, no no he was here and he totally panicked for me um and didn't realize i had this other square including singles and phantoms and i was easily resolved from that singles and phantoms square um and he was very oh no don't oh my god how'd you do that <laughs> it was it was uh one of those times where as a caller, we have lots of things going on at once. Clark? Um, broadening the topic just a little bit to resolving, um, or how do you resolve the square? In 19, I started dancing in, for, or kind of continuously in 74. Um, and by 70, 1975, I wanted to write a computer program that would generate smooth flowing danceable square dance material i didn't want to be a caller um i just wanted to computerize the activity and i used to computerize everything board games puzzles whatever um so this continued on with my let's computerize it and i got the the which calls can follow which calls and what is flow and overflow and what is smooth and what isn't smooth, or at least a, a start at all that. But the hard part was how does how do I make the computer program resolve? And at the time, I wasn't an accomplished enough programmer 
to kind of just brute force say, what are all the calls I can do from here? Where do I end up? What are all the calls next and next and next? And find the shortest path to the shortest resolve. So I figured the right way to solve this problem was to go interview square dance callers and ask them, hey, how do you resolve the square? There must be some trick to it. Tell me what your trick is. And I went to the, the club caller, the one who taught me, um, and he couldn't really articulate what he did very well. He might have had two or three things and he couldn't really explain it. And I went to Don, um, another caller I knew at the time, and all he would do is tell me about his mental image system, which was fine, but, and that headed down a whole nother path. But I didn't see how I could implement that in the computer because it wasn't general purpose enough for me. Um, and you kind of had to have the computer track it throughout the whole, the whole time. And I wanted a computer program that could do anything from anywhere that was legitimate. And I talked to a third caller, um, Bob Gamble, um, and he kind of explained it, what he did. And based on that, I invented my own thing that was kind of three steps, which is what computers could do, but not what people necessarily do. But a lot of it was similar. The first thing was get to a, a known formation and then get to normal couples. And then from there, I had worked out some, if you're here, do this, if you're here, do that. And, and that was my first exposure to how do you resolve the square? But it was fascinating to me as a dancer that you could ask callers and they basically couldn't explain what they do. I, uh, I want to straighten out a few fa one fact in your, your story there. Go Mark. for it. <laughs> you said you went to another caller you knew, Don Beck. Actually, we didn't know each other. That was our introduction. I stopped. Oh, really? By, <laughs> yeah, I, I stopped by at a, at a Tech Square dance and I was sitting on the side and you came running over and sat next to me and people said, and you said to me, people say you have a way of resolving the square. Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that sounds like me. That That's where we met. Yeah, that's our introduction. And, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dennis Marsh, by the way, was the first yeah. caller, the one who taught me and the one I asked, how does he resolve? Right. Uh, when, when I asked Dennis that question. When I, when, I, when I eventually came along about eight or nine years later, um, and I asked him, by then he had, a, he had a pat answer, and he was able to recite the algorithm to me. And I just looked at that, and I was like, I'll never be able to do that. I, it's just too complicated. Um, sort of the, uh, the, uh, the effect of being overwhelmed by that that somebody else had mentioned that happens to, to uh, people in, the, in college schools. Clark, I just was thinking of another program that you could do for us at some point. You mentioned that you were just computerizing lots of things. Um, and at the time, I remember lots of things that were very interesting that you did. Fre call frequency things, um, call frequency per caller, two, two call sequences, three call sequences, or modules or what have you, different callers in different amounts. And I remember you're saying you figured you could really get to a point of generating choreography that that dancers would be able to recognize this is Don Beck, this is Jim Mayo, this is Lee Kopman, just by Or the, Deuce Williams from your comment earlier. Yeah. Um, think you can put a program together that would be of interest on, on some of the I mean the the whole thing of call frequency and, and what, what what Bill Davis was working on out in California too, as uh, different ways of looking at these things. Um, if you think of any thing that, that you could present that would be of interest to people, I remember it was of interest to me at the time. It, it'd be a cool thing to look at. Mo yeah, that frequency. might have some potential. Dan, you look like you were almost gonna, Dan, you look like you were almost gonna say something on that. Nope. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, module frequency is, uh, you know, just having a database of, uh, of uh, called from tapes of things that they do would be the, would be the, uh, the 1970 way of doing it. But, but now, if you're going to do it, Clark, you should figure out how to do it with some kind of, you know, neural net. <laughs> 
Sure, we've got nothing better to do, huh? <laughs> Conversation seems to be slowing down. Shall we uh, call it a day? Let me make one more point. Um, but yeah. Um, so let's imagine that you've become the world's best mainstream caller and you're the world's best um, resolver at mainstream. Um, and, you know, you don't stress doing it. You, you have a variety of ways of resolving and the dancers often don't see it coming, et cetera. And then you decide as a caller to move into plus and then advanced. And then maybe even the early stages of challenge like C1. It's likely that you are going to continue to resolve your plus in advanced choreography using your well-learned, well-worn and very comfortable ways of resolving at mainstream. And that can be a problem. You won't turn into the world's best advanced caller if all your resolves are your long learned and well-worn mainstream resolves. So it's something to consider if you start moving up the dance programs. Um, and then the second thing, um, we never did really, Don had a puzzle on the screen where he said, how quickly can we resolve this? And we never really did come up with a short way of resolving that. Um, I do know that when I dance with Lynette Bellini in the square, a one of the country's top C4 dancers and a very good caller, she can mutter under her breath for every place we generally are in the square, the resolve right from there. So somehow she is good enough at resolving. And I think she's worked on this to see, oh yeah, we're here, it's a this and a that. We're here, it's these two calls, it's these three calls. Now they're generally challenge calls, but she's incorporated those into her toolbox. Um, and she thinks that's a really good you know, point of pride with her. Um, I never thought it was worth learning it, nor that I could learn it, or that I would use it enough, et cetera, et cetera. But um, she probably looks her, her nose down at me as a caller because I don't have that particular skill. Um, I don't think it's that important to be able to just look at the square, know you're in a du beginning double pass through, see that the out the inside couples are paired, that the outside couples aren't paired. And of course, it's, I mean, I recognize the Dixie Grand one. We should know that head star through Zoom, you can do Dixie Grand to an Alaman left. And I can recognize that position. I can snapshot it. But there's many, many others that I can't snapshot. And I don't feel the worst for that as a caller. But, but you do, but you do have a collection of things uh, at challenge that you that like you know what the uh, uh relay the I, top I know turn Grand star Chinese three and stuff. Yeah. Re relay the top turn to star three quarters. You know what that setup looks like. Things like that. Yeah, I don't that one, but I do know that there are those things. Um, it, mental image pops into mind, but even though you don't have the versatility, um, when you are using mental image and it's time to resolve, it's really much, much easier to do. Um, cancel X's if necessary, bring a guy to a spot. Bang. Yeah, I echo that. Yeah. And in fact, I'll say one more thing. If I'm resolving and no matter what I do, the people just don't seem to come together well. I know I probably need an X and I'll do an X and then suddenly the world is in a better place. Um, I, I use this frequently and I didn't mention it here, but it, you know, if you're site calling and you're trying to match somebody up, you've got somebody on one side and, and the person you want to match them up is on the other and you do a pass through trade by and the person you're trying to match zip to the other side so you do a swing through boys or, or centers run couples circulate and the person zips to the other side if that happens and you know mental image call an x any x and then bring one of them across and the other will stand there and wait for them you know mental image is a handy tool in in lots of ways like that um it, uh, here i go talking about advantages but singing calls i can cite call the first and fourth figure of a singing call because I've already memorized the people in the pattern 
the first sequence, I just take them to that person and and swing them. The person that was the corner, the, this, the last sequence, I go to that corner and say, Alaman left and come back and promenade or swing. But the middle two sequences, I've got to memorize new partners, new corners. I fall back on mental image because I ad lib my singing calls and the, the mental image handles it beautifully for me. I'm a broken record. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> As I say, I still mostly say call. Interesting session. Well, I thought it was interesting. Interesting that I was able to pull something out of a hat that I didn't have prepared um, without too much preparation. But there's a lot to, to go on this, and I'm sure we could we could spend, and I thought we would be spending more time with taminations and, and practicing these, but the time went, as usual, time went by pretty quickly. Um, I know we could spend a full session on each of the resolve techniques and practice those and what have you, but I'm not sure this is the place for that. Um, maybe we'll resort to that at some point if there's there's suggestions in wanting to do that. With that, I think I'm going to uh, see if there are any more chats I should record and save so I can read them later. I'm not doing good at, at multitasking and reading at the same time. It looks like I not so. I am going to bow out, guys, and we will see you next week and the week after and sometimes before that. Cool. <laughs> Thank Cheers, you. Guys. Thank Thanks. you. Bye. Don't mind me. I'm just chatting with Regina in the uh, in the chat section, <laughs> which is to the uh, the the particular discussion. There was um, how does Don keep his timing uh, right on singing calls, and I think that at some point we all become semi modular with the flow modules and timing, and um, so that we kind of know how long things are going to take but I do my singing calls as modules. I do them the, like Don does. With my, oh, well, I never sight call them because I'm too chicken. Um, I either, you know, read them because I'm a good reader. Well, used to be a good reader or I do them on mental image. Um, and nowadays, of course, I do basically everything on mental image, but the, um, but uh, you, I mean, you just know how long the calls take and, you know, you have some idea where you're headed um yeah oh i'm looking forward to be able to dance and call again <laughs> i might be I, I did a dance a couple of weeks ago and i might be doing one this week i hope um yeah i've i've got a a couple of opportunities i just don't feel comfortable with it yet um so i might be have. uh i might be starting a new group actually <laughs> uh at the end of the week there's a uh there's a place that called me up that uh apparently has a bunch of people that wish they were square dancing and they want to they want to start a group and um it's a it's a closed community and so you know i told them you know we'll we'll see what the uh covid situation is like within your group uh you know a couple of days beforehand um are you talking uh, virtually, Chris, or live? No, it's um, all live. Mm -hmm. I'm in Utah. We've been very fortunate. We um, we only shut down over the last two years for maybe seven months in the very beginning of the COVID situation, maybe eight, somewhere around that. And then we started dancing at the Cures house with a small group, uh, like a square. And then we just grew it from there back to the original you know, club folks, there's two clubs in this area. Um, but now we're to the point where one of the clubs, one of the clubs is a caller run club. I call for that one with the other, with another caller. And then one of the clubs is board run and the board doesn't want to do it anymore. So it's, it's uncertain at this point whether they're, they're going to fold and we're all going to dance on the same night. It's the same dancers, you know, um, or whether um, they're going to let the callers take it over. And if they let us take it over, we're going to keep both nights for a while because 
we're not confident that either one of those locations is going to continue to let us dance there. So we're afraid to give up one and then lose the other one and be, you know, up the creek. Right. Where I am, it's uh, there's there's basically uh, uh, the, the greater metro area is spread across uh, two states and the different states have different theories about what things should be shut down where and when. Uh, but but basically the whole area shut down pretty much for the whole pandemic. Where are uh, you? Oh, sorry. I, I'm in D.C. Oh, in D.C. Oh, because it's yeah. Maryland and Maryland and uh, D.C. Maryland and well, Maryland and Virginia. Yeah, Maryland, Virginia. Yeah. yeah, there's only one club in D.C. and they they shut down. Um, the um, but the but I mean the you know it's all the same metro area. A lot of people from you know traveled right across the state line because they're you know 15 minute drive, and um, uh, both of them were shut down for a long time and then Maryland opened some things up. Um, they seemed very determined, uh, but then they had other things that were shut down. In Virginia, we mostly used the schools and those were all shut down. Um, and then uh, this fall, we got some of it reopened. And so there's been some dancing and, but every week people are, you know, every, every there's a mailing list that has, you know, sort of the whole schedule for the whole area and yeah. people make announcements on it. And the announcements lately are all, you know, we're, we're, we're dancing followed by, oh, no, we canceled the evening. And a lot of people are doing, uh, taking head counts, you know, to see if they're going to get enough people. And so it's, uh, so it's, it's been back on more or less since September, but it's kind of iffy. Yeah. And then yeah. after the new year, uh, it's, uh, it's been, it's too early to tell what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, we have the advantage of being in a <clears throat> very sparsely, well, compared to where you are or where Dan, I know Dan is, because I used to live out there, uh, very sparsely uh, populated. It doesn't have near the density that you guys have. I'm in Southern Utah, about two hours North of Vegas. So Vegas is going through very much what you're describing, Chris, on, we're off, we're on, we're off, but we've been pretty, pretty steady through and through. We danced with masks on for a long time, masks and gloves. Uh, we had the caller calling behind a plexiglass. We did that for a long while um, before we finally opened it up. And we didn't have any special dances where we had people coming from out of the area until maybe a year, a little over a year. And We've had as much as I think 50, 50 or 55 dancers out here when we had Romney out or others, some others out for that. That's the, uh, we've had uh, two or three um, in, in the last uh, four or five months, we've had two or three uh, special dances, you know, put on by the association for one reason or another. Like we had the Toys for Tots dance was probably the most recent one. Um, and we've had uh, good turnouts at those um, with people from both states and um, we had some people, we had uh, one, one uh, former uh, resident actually uh, drive all the way up here from North Carolina <laughs> because they wanted to go to it. Wow. Uh, so we've had some, we've had some pretty good luck with that. And we haven't had any, any, uh, any uh, disasters, you know, with people getting sick or anything. We haven't either. Yeah. We had, we uh, we, get we sick, had a, not related to dancing. Right. Yeah. We had, we had some people who got sick individually uh, yeah. and, but they, uh, but they know, but they know where it happened and it wasn't, uh, yeah. you know, it, you know, at work and that, and they at work knew about it and they figured it out, you know, we had so we one know. freak out here when the Lolo dance happened. And uh, I don't know if you guys heard about that Lolo Montana but they had 200 dancers up there and it was uh, uh, vaccine cards were required. Mm -hmm. And of the 200 dancers, 33 came down with COVID. They were all vaccinated. Right, yeah. So people kind of freaked out a little bit um, after that. And we had some low turnouts for a little while, then people got over it. Even our, even our big dances uh, are not anywhere near that size. Yeah. That, like that, that Toys for Tots was, you know, yeah. 50 something people probably there, 50, 60, something like that. Hey, by the way, did you call with Dean Singleton up there? No. I know he I'm, called in that area. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I had family members that were living up in that area and dancing to him, but I think he's in Arizona now. 
Yeah, he moved away. Yeah, I think that's where he went. Yeah. yeah. Yep, a few years ago, I think. He yeah. was. Uh, he was. Uh, he was over in Maryland. Yeah, um, yeah. They were in uh, Germantown. My my sister and her husband were in Germantown, and they danced to him. And uh, and then I met him at uh, USA West in Reno. He's fun. He's a fun guy. Yeah. I think yeah. he moved to Arizona like the year before COVID. Yeah. Oh, oh, Mike. Hey, Mike, the silent one. Okay. Well, that's it for me. I'm going to, I'm going to take off. I just All right. started a conversation with Dan. Good to see you, Dan. Good to see you, Regina. I miss you guys. Yeah. I, well, I haven't been down there in a while and yeah, we're not. Um... Hi, Mike. I'm waiting it the Petaluma group you know I'm I'm extra cautious and then the Petaluma group has gotten kicked to the curb so many times by various natural disasters we you know a couple fires and things fires, like that yeah 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 um, some that I'm just like you know give it a while to settle down and then we'll see what we want to do and yeah, yeah so yeah gotcha there, a number of uh, a number of clubs here have actually in terms of the on again, off again, there's there's several that just kind of threw their hands up and said, everything's off until at least, you know, mid-February. Don't even, <laughs> we won't even bother. We've also done some workshops out here at the house. My, my dad's a caller, more like a teacher than a club caller, but he's been teaching square dancing up through advanced for uh, 25 years or better. He's been dancing for like 50 years. Uh, but we have uh, an apartment above the garage here that has um, enough for two squares. And uh, we've also, throughout this thing, brought people over to the house and given refresher uh, teaches on. My dad's not really teaching or calling much anymore. He's 85, 80, almost 86 now, and he's had some health challenges, but I'm doing it. And, um, and that's helped a lot to get people uh, some confidence back who were weaker dancers to begin with most of them and now with the with the covid shutdown they're just like well they, i can't remember how to do a run you know you know, you know what you could do you could uh you, you could get those guys get 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 your two squares up in that room and then do a zoom dance have just tune into one of the Bring more uh, people in yeah 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 the, then they could uh because then they'd be able to do them you know uh still socially and whatever and also even with eight people where that where they're doing that kind of zoom calling logistically um, i'd have to think about how that would work because it's a pretty tight little apartment space on when i got two when i have two squares up there it's pretty tight but we typically don't have two squares uh, these days typically right. we have a square and uh not quite a second one so people are sitting out might be able to rig something up but it's a little bit tight space but that's yeah. a good idea because usually it's just you know two people in their kitchen, right? In. But yeah. you can have you can have uh, a lot more people than that all tuned in. Um, yeah, that'd be kind of, and they could get, you know. Yeah, uh, it's better that you know at least you'd have two couple dancing, which is better than two person dancing. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. You know, for people who, especially if you're trying to you know, bring it back to the surface, you know. I was doing a little bit of virtual dancing for ECR, Dan, um, but I was finding that m with my parents' internet connection, it wasn't great. The timing was off. Um, there was uh, even just a slow delay on the singing call made it pretty miserable. Um, so I stopped doing that. But now since then, my brother-in-law has come and installed some sort of uh, network thing. Uh, I believe they have a satellite connection which is what the problem is because it's not full duplex typically when you right. have a, a satellite connection. Um, but he brought something in uh, that's like little, almost like little uh, um, access point things that he put throughout the house. Okay. And it has boosted the signal, but I haven't tried it to see if the timing. Uh, uh, even if you it. boost the Wi-Fi, if the connection from the Wi-Fi back to the internet is still not full right. um what i did with my uh voice teacher when we were not doing in person is yeah, i yeah. eventually we tried something called jamulus which is available on various computers and that worked okay but eventually i bought dedicated little devices which are based on a raspberry pi um that talk to uh 
set of servers called Jack Trip. And that gave us amazingly low latency. And then because she's got cable, I've got bi-directional fiber, so everything's groovy here. Um, we used something called OBS, OBS.ninja, which is a web, web implemented uh, video conferencing system, but it lets you in the URL specify um, how much bandwidth to use. So I could set hers to use not much bandwidth at all. And, you know, I only got, like four frames a second, but that let all of the excess go to the audio. And right. so we actually got fast enough audio that we could pretty much play together. You know, it was like a, a 20th of a second or so delay latency, but- how, How's but the voice lessons going? How, how, how was that? Was oh, that it's, yeah, I'm, <clears throat> I'm starting to feel really good. We've oh been, yeah? yeah? I've thought a lot about that. Oh. oh, let me come out in just a minute. Okay. Yeah, my mom. Yeah, it's um, it, it's it, the the few people who hear me say, "Wow, you're sounding really good now." Big so, difference. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Interesting. What kinds of things have you focused on? Like um, what? it's well, you know, at this point, it's been what four years. Oh of, wow! Okay. Of four of years of weekly lessons. Yeah. Um, so we've been through a lot of stuff. Uh, the the consistent thing is just relaxing and and increasing my the the muscles so that I can do things like get through where I used to have yeah. have breaks and yodels and not. And now we're getting into a lot of okay, what if you're going to hold a note? What textures do you put on it? What kind of trills or you know Ooh, fancy stuff or stuff do you do cool. you put on it? Um, and and I'm getting enough control over my voice that I can actually do that, yeah. you know. That um, so yeah, it's it's so much fun and it's going. You know, the other thing is without calling, it's like yeah. I don't have a place to perform this, but it's so much more than I could use right. in calling because it's so satisfying too. So satisfying. Yeah, I know. I'm finding with the vocal stuff because I have no formal vocal training, right? It's just, mm -hmm. uh, just calling. That's the, the only singing that I've done, right? And I get good feedback about it, but I'm to the point where, you know how, like I, um, for Chris, I've only been calling for five years. So um, you know how the more you know, the more you know you don't know? Yes. Right? So the same thing is happening with my vocals now where I start to notice, I'm starting to notice like things that I didn't notice before, right? Where it sounded, mm -hmm. it seemed like it was good enough right? Um, and one of the things I'm noticing, oddly enough, is that, because um, you would think you would think I would have noticed this in the beginning, is that uh, my muscles tighten when I'm on stage and nervous. And it, I mean, you're going to, every time you're on stage, there's going to be some amount of nervousness because, I mean, let's just take all the things we talked about with the patter, right? That's all there prior to the singing call, right? right? Like, Whew, thank God, like I, I made it, they got home, they seem to have fun, you know, but that all that residual stress is still there, even when you're starting the singing call that you feel pretty comfortable with, right? So I get muscles get tight with the nervousness, and then my range decreases, and I get much lower, too. So yeah. where, I had, where I had it dialed into a sweet spot, now it's not coming, and I've done so much practice on the song, and now I'm live on stage, and it does not sound the same at all, and I'm just it's so disappointing That's... that and the frustration of nowadays trying to do a singing call where the timing is right because people are taking so long to get home even though no one's swinging so i've gone down from like okay i'm not going to do anything over 60 beats even though i know they're not going to swing still nothing over mm -hmm. 60 beats. now i and then i went down to like 58 and now I'm like, okay, I'd rather be at 55 beats and have them be like, like this at home <laughs> before they go heads go back in and do anything else again, than to have them not make it in time for the grand square or whatever. It's so frustrating to put so much practice into a singing call and then have it flop. At I just the, had a funny idea. I, yeah. I wonder. If, I wonder if anybody has tried um, doing uh, singing calls with the. Uh, uh, real-time pitch correction, you know, oh, auto-tune. I hate <laughs> auto-tune. I hate the sound of auto-tune. Oh, oh God, I it's it's the oh. big existence because I have I you know some some younger cousins right who are in their 
in, in their twenties and below. Yeah. And I, 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 just, oh, oh. I um, so early on in my starting to call, a friend of mine loaned me an auto tune box. And you don't have to crank it all the way up to, you know, share yeah, and you right, yeah. levels. You can just do a little bit. But it turns out that one of the things that my voice teacher has been work, working with me, and of course, this is two years ago now, um, was being way less worried about pitch. Because one of the things that, that was happening is I would, I, my, uh, both my grandmother and my mother were uh, church choir leaders. Oh, and my, my grandmother, especially. And so I had really good pitch, but my note had no texture in it oh. and no, you know, it was just so. It, yeah, it was like, uh, you know, I may as well have been auto-tuned um, and it sounded really gross and awful. And so, yeah, one of the things that we've worked on and because I was really tense trying to hold that yeah. note. Yeah, so yeah. trying to get away from that has improved my voice dramatically. Yeah. I have the I have the exact opposite problem which is that I have a very good sense of musical phrasing and, and plenty of texture and my, and my pitch and my range is just crap. Um, <laughs> and so I describe myself as like not a singer. And, but, the, but there are lots of people who dance to me like, oh, this is great singing. And uh, it's, um, uh, I mean, basically I'm just faking it all the time. And, uh, you know, I, I, if, if, I play, if I play back a recording of myself, I'm just like, oh, God, oh, oh, oh. Phrasing is worth a lot. Phrasing yeah. is worth a lot, yeah. yeah. In both the patter and the singing, phrasing is worth a lot. And I think people will put up with uh, key um, pitchiness, you know, um, as long as it's not shrill. Like, so right. women have that problem. Men, usually that's not the problem, but, um, and I, I sing more in a male range, but, um, but yeah, I think they will put up with pitchiness and rather have it in exchange for really solid timing and freight freight phrasing measure. Oh, you did? Okay, great. Yeah, for sure. Um, so do you yeah, have a, a with you, with me? It's like, hey, sounds like he's singing. He's not, <laughs> but he sounds like it is. <laughs> okay, let's see. <Hey>. Yeah. <laughs> That's my analysis of what's going on there. <laughs> We never sound great to ourselves when we listen back anyway. It's just how it is. Um, one of the most valuable things that I've gotten out of my uh, teacher, and she was a little reluctant to do this because it was like, I don't want you to just take this and go off and not pay me anymore. Um, yeah, right. Was um, recording my warm ups, uh, running through a bunch of arpeggios and different things. And it's kind of got to be done specific to a person because all of our breaks fall at different places. But um, if I do no other practice, I try to at least sing along to one of those once a day, which, mm -hmm. you know, is 20 or 30 minutes a day. But that has, that's amazingly useful. And I don't know if you play an instrument, but coming up with some arpeggios and exercises, recording those, so you can just sing them. And, you know, sometimes that's earbuds when I'm in the, in the workshop hollering at the walls. Um, to do that daily just strengthens everything and helps me learn how to relax them. My, my living situation is uh, very suboptimal uh, these days. And I am basically, I'm in a position where I can't make any noise. So I can never practice anything. And I mean, I don't even turn the TV on. I got, you know, headphones all the time. Wow. Yeah, that's hard. That's yeah. hard. I, I've been working with Tom Miller since um, the COVID thing started. For So for the last two years, he and I have been working, um, on, he's been mentoring me, caller mentoring me um, on patter for the last two years. And he said to me that he practices his singing calls every single day. And you think about how accomplished Tom is, you know, mm -hmm. um, and he, he still, he practices his singing calls every day. So it does make a difference, but yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta go out off and get a library room or something, Chris. Yeah, really. So a soundproof room and, or a room at, if you're near a college, you know, they, sometimes they have a music program where you can go and I don't know, I don't know if they do that for non-students or not, but 
got to find yourself a place. Go in the field find- that it looks like you're sitting in right now with your background. <laughs> <laughs> Go scare the animals. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. I've got a nice talking to you guys. Good talking to y'all. See ya. Catch you later. Bye.